Hey, good morning guys, Laura with Garden Answer. This morning I'm getting ready to plant a new shrub in my garden, I'm really excited about it. This is called a Winecraft Black Smoke Bush, and this, you guys, is a game changer, for me at least. This is the first dwarf size growing smoke bush. Um, it only grows four to six feet tall and wide, which is so awesome, because if you've ever grown a smoke bush before, or if you've seen them in the landscape, most of them get enormous, and you have to have a huge space to plant one. Uh, and I just, I love the structure of the plant. I love their blooms. I love the color of the foliage. So to have one that I can tuck into spaces in my garden rather than have to dedicate a huge amount of space is amazing. So I wanted to explain this area a little bit to you guys because, um, I, I mean, we've planted quite a bit in here. When we moved in last year, there was a hawthorn tree right here in the center. I think it was planted right about here and it was pretty much dead. So we had it removed. Everything else underneath it had pretty much fizzled out. So the only things we kept were the irises here, which you can see are looking a little weary from the summertime. There is a mock orange shrub, kind of that lighter green, and then the lilac right behind it. Those were here and we kept those. But everything right here we've planted. So um, I did a vlog where we planted this Russian hawthorn, which is so pretty. It rained last night, you guys, so everything looks really nice. I also planted this Fat Albert Blue Spruce, which eventually will get pretty good size. So I'm planting this area knowing that I might have to move some things eventually, but they're not an enormously fast grower. So I'll get years out of enjoying all of these plants before I need to move them. I've got an Arctic Fire Dogwood right here, which is coloring up beautiful for fall, beautiful red stems. We've got three roses called Morden Blush. There's some Dianthus we put in. There are Lemon Jade Sedum, which you guys might remember, and I've enjoyed these so much. I love the brightness of the color and the color of their blooms. Have a grass right here, which I kind of wanted that kind of wispy, kind of more tender texture right here. And so this one is gonna fill in this space because I needed red here really bad. I've got a Weeping Willow right here, which is one of my favorites. These are so magical looking, but it's a very light green. I've got blue here, the Arctic Fire Dogwood is green in the summertime, so I needed something red. I needed some white right here. So the fact that this one will fit this area and I don't have to worry about pruning it all the time or keeping it under control is awesome. So also, if you come this way, we've got a bunch more area to plant. So when we moved in, there was a huge, and I think we may have showed it to you in a garden tour. I'll have to go back and take a look. There was a huge juniper right here. It went way out into the grass. It came all the way over in front of the Hebe statue here. And then it came over probably, I wanna say a good four or five bricks over. Like it was enormous. Um, and it, you know, weeping willow trees, while they're beautiful, they do drop quite a few leaves. So it was just a mess all the time. So we had that removed. I'm really excited to plant this spot up. It just looks nice and mulched right now, which I like too. And then I also wanted to mention, I've got four penstemon right here, which um, don't look like super great, but that's something I wanted to mention in the fall time. A lot of times so when you go down to the garden center, you can find plants that maybe don't look at, in their prime, but you can get a really good deal on them. Don't like hesitate to pick those type of plants up because most of the time the roots are healthy as can be. They've just had kind of maybe a hard season. Um, you know, plants don't behave the same in their cans as they do in the ground. So, you know, don't be afraid to pick up those type of plants, put them in the ground. Most of the time they do really great. So these will grow about 36 to 40 inches tall with beautiful, like lilac purple blooms. And I thought they would be really pretty right beneath her. So, I mean, you can tell this area is being seen by two different sides. So I have to keep that in mind. This side I'm facing right now is our grass. So our lawn, we see this side from our house. And then the other side is our driveway. So when we drive by or when people drive by, they're seeing this side. So, you know, you kind of have to think of layers in those terms. You don't want to back everything tall up right to the back because, you know, you want it to kind of peak. So there's different layers of interest from both sides. So anyway, this is where the smoke bush is gonna go. A couple other things that I really like about this, it's a zone four through eight. I garden in a zone five. So I know it's plenty winter, winter hardy enough to uh, survive our winters. It's also resistant to deer and rabbits. I know a lot of you guys deal with those in your garden. So planting things that can resist them is nice. They also bloom beautifully. So about early summer, they come out with these pinkish red blooms and then they're followed by what we know as the smoke. 
you know, that misty smoke that the smoke bushes produce, they're not actually the flowers of the plant, they're the seed pods that the flowers, after the flowers are spent, that's what is left behind. And they're beautiful on the plant and they're also beautiful in flower arrangements. And the other thing, so the name of this plant, Winecraft Black, it comes out in the spring, a really pretty purple colored foliage. And then the heat of the summer makes the leaves almost a deep plummy black, like a super deep color. And then in the fall, they start coloring up uh, oranges and, and reds. And you can tell that this one's already starting to lighten up. I can see the veining is looking a lot lighter. You can see on the underside of the leaves, it's a lot lighter. So I'm expecting in the next week or two to see a very, very pretty fall show. So you get a lot of interest out of this one plant. All right, so I'm just gonna get it in the ground. We'll see how it looks. All right, so Erin set the camera down really quick to come dig my hole for me because I am over six months pregnant at this point and that's why I'm always out of breath when I'm talking to you guys. I'm always constantly trying to catch my breath. So now I'm just gonna put it in the ground. I'm not gonna add anything special because we are getting into you know a colder part of fall and we really don't need to fertilize or anything like that this time of year so i'm just going to put it in the ground and mulch around it so before i set the root ball down in the ground you can see i've got some brown drip tubing that's how we will be irrigating in this spot if i notice i need to add a little bit of extra water to any of these plants i can always punch in with the you know the little black tubing and we'll add an extra emitter here or there if we need to but this should be sufficient because these are pretty uh, low water users, they don't require a ton, ton of water. Yep, that looks really good. It looks amazing in this spot, I think. I think the colors are perfect. And I think it'll be really happy because this spot gets full sun. Um, if it weren't overcast right now, we'd have a good block of morning sun on it right now. And then it gets sun until late in the afternoon, maybe even into the evening. So it should do really well. In fact, smoke bushes prefer full sun. The more sun you can give them, the better um, because it helps them color up nicer and flower better. And the other thing I didn't mention about the flowering is that they bloom on new wood. So even if you have to come out here and prune on this a little bit just to maintain shape or size or whatever, you can do that and it'll still bloom the following year. But there's no maintenance really required on this plant. You don't need to prune it if it doesn't need it unless you need to you know, like I said, size control it a little bit, but it's such a smaller shrub that you just wanna, you know, find a spot where it can just grow to its nice and mature size, and that way you don't ever have to mess with it. That's the best, like the most ideal situation. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, seeing this plant go in and, you know, kind of getting a little mini tour of this spot because it has changed a lot and I'm really happy with how it's looking. And I know it's a process for a lot of us, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of steps. You know, we had that hawthorn tree removed at the beginning of last year, so in the spring, and it's just been sitting here kind of empty. It sat empty all of last year, just kind of waiting. And, you know, I know that that's how it goes. We do a little bit when we can, and then eventually it starts to come together and it's really exciting. So anyway, I hope you guys have a really great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.